Welcome to We Are Reading Virtual Storytime for the week of November 7th, 2021, Part 1. This week's theme is art. When I Draw a Panda, written and illustrated by Amy June Bates. I love to draw. Sometimes when they say to draw a perfect circle, mine turns out a little wonky. I can draw a perfect fluffy cloud, a perfect scoop of ice cream, and a perfect flat tire. So when I draw a panda, I keep drawing more and more not perfect circles until I see a panda. Then I step back and think, what else does a panda need? He probably needs a hat, and then he is my panda. My panda draws his own way. When someone tells him to draw a castle the right way, he would rather draw it the left way. And if they tell him to draw something pretty, he draws something pretty silly. My panda shows me how to draw a dragon. One, draw a squiggle. Two, decide which end is the head and which end is the tail. Three, draw the tail last. Sometimes when they say to draw a perfect pirate, superhero, crocodile, mad scientist, or princess, my panda prefers to draw an imperfect, superheroic, madly scientific, piratical princess crocodile. Sometimes when they say to draw a perfect bowl of fruit, my panda looks out the window and watches a butterfly. Then he thinks about what it would be like to be a butterfly until he has totally forgotten what he was supposed to be drawing. I can draw my own way too. Sometimes when they say to draw it this way, I ask why. And when they say draw it that way, I do, but I add a unicorn horn later. Sometimes they say, that will never work, but it does. Sometimes they say, make sure you don't run out of space, but I did it, so I do. Sometimes they can't figure out what we have drawn, and then it's a mystery, because we will never tell them. Sometimes they say, you and your panda draw too crazy, and I say, thank you. Sometimes we are supposed to draw quietly, but we can't help it. Our pencils like to roar. Sometimes lines come out of our pencils and they are not going anywhere in particular. They are just going somewhere that makes us happy. The end. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make our own panda. Um, I have a piece of tracing paper taped to an outline of a panda here, a picture of a panda. Um, so all you're going to do is trace it and decorate it. Now, some of the little guys are going to have a lot more trouble tracing it, and that's fine. Um, you can either help them or let them do it on their own if you were calling the story. Um, she came up with a panda by just doing all kinds of circles, so however you want to do it, but all I'm going to do is trace the outline of the panda and then I'm going to decorate it. Might want to hold your paper down because it bends. Once you finish decorating and coloring your panda, um, you can take the tracing paper off, just bend it back, a little piece of tape up here, carefully pull it off, I get stuck to here, didn't want to tear the paper that we did, so I'm just going to fold it over. And that's it. 
that's it. That's what your panda looks like. Um, I made mine pink and purple because I thought that would be cute. Um, you can do yours however you want. And like I said, um, if the little ones have trouble tracing and they want to do it themselves, go ahead and let them have at it. It's still good for their fine motor skills to just hold the markers or crayons or colored pencils or whatever you use. And, um, you know, no craft is perfect. So that's what I got. Thank you.